Tom from Meds Radio Control Model. So what we have here for you today is the build overview of the Freewing F14. This model is absolutely stunning and it's a really really nice size. It's got a wingspan of 1550 with them extended and a length of 1540. So it's a really really nice size jet and as you can see it looks absolutely stunning. It has a full swing wing, full retracts, flaps, aileron, fl full flying tail surfaces everything that you could ever want. It flies on two six cell 4000 to 5100. I'm flying them on 5000s which I'll go over in the second part of this video. And this video will be split into two parts. One part will be the build just so you can see how it goes together and anything that I may change or not agree with and then the second part of the video is the features, how it works and a couple of things that I would change with how it's set up just to make it fly that tiny bit better than it does already but as I say everything I'll go over with in the second part of the video and I shall catch you for the beginning of the build video so the first thing that you've got to do with the F14 is to glue the nose on what you'll notice is on the nose there are two carbon fibre rods and they fit into two carbon fibre rods in the back of the fuselage there. You'll need to add some of the free wing glue and I'm just going to glue it all the way around this surface here, all the way around there and all the way down the back edge. This will give you a really 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 good gluing surface. The other place to add a little bit of glue is also just down the sides of here and on the other side there. This is so that when you push it in these will slot right into there and just give you a little bit of extra glue in surface just to keep the nose on nice and straight. Once you've left that glue to go off for a couple of seconds just pull it out, leave a little bit of a gap and then just push it back together. As the free wing glue is a contact adhesive and just lift the nose up just enough so it's got enough glue and time to purchase. And then once that's stuck on that'll be nicely glued on there. Whilst the nose glue is finishing drying, the next thing that you can be doing is putting on the infrared scope. This is really really nice and I love how the way Freewing have done it. It's actually got a hole in the front which actually channels air through the fuselage. So this is where your air cooling comes for your batteries. So again, just with the Freewing glue, put a little bit on there, a little bit on there, just put a little bit on the sides don't need that much, just enough. And that fits underneath the nose at the front. If you have a look at the instructions, you can see just there that it goes on the front there with a little bit of glue. I'm just going to push that on now. then I shall let that go off. So the next part is to put the rudders on. I've already connected this up just to show you that there are three wires, two for the LEDs, there's one at the back there and there's one at the front there. Three LEDs, two LEDs sorry, and the rudder, the wires need to get pushed down into this hole in here. There is a small groove on the inside of the fin just here and that's where your wires need to go if your wires aren't going to go there you won't be able to get them to fit when you try and screw the fins on so I'm just going to push those down in there pop the, the tail on and then there are four screws two at the front and two at the backs so I'll just do all of that now and I should do the same for the other side as well as you can see I've got one of these on just to mention that the servos need to be facing inwards on the rudders. So you've got the lovely look, anniversary, the cat is back, Northrop Grumman sticker on the inside, and you've got the standard NE on the outside. Make sure that when you put these in, you don't over tighten them. The plastic on the inside is a little bit soft. So just tighten them up until they're just friction tight, and then that will be fine. That will mean that you'll be able to get them in and out 
if you do have any accidents or knock them on your way out. And you can just replace these as individual items as well, which makes it a nice kit for if you do have any mishaps. So as you can see both tails are on. The other thing that I wanted to mention before we move on is the right hand fin only has one LED. It doesn't have two. So don't be alarmed when you go to go and do your wiring and find that there's only two wires on this side. It does only have one. This is actually as per the real F14 which is a really really nice feature and really shows that Freewing have gone right out of their way to make sure that everything is as scale as physically possible. The elevators are the next thing that we need to be putting on. Now these are one of the most complicated parts of the kit uh, in terms of screws and putting it together. So I'm just going to go through it step by step on what you need and where you need to put it. So the elevators come in a solid half like that and there's nothing on the bottom. In your pack of accessories you'll have one of these metal horns they just slip in the top. Now these are a very tight fit and they need to be. If they're not a tight fit then obviously you're going to get quite a lot of movement on the actual kit itself when it's all attached. So once that's on you'll have two very very small screws. They go into the top the holes closest to the edge. Ignore that third hole that third hole actually isn't used for anything. So just go in those top two holes there. Once you've put those on, just like that with the two screws, the next thing to do is to create the ball length that will go on the end there. What you'll have in your kit is, an, is a longer, longer screw like that and a ball joint. What you need to do is you need to put this long screw through the ball. So just push it through like that. Then what you'll end up with is the ball link with the screw poking out. So what you need to do is you need to pop that through the side of there facing towards so the ball is facing towards the outside like that. Once you've done that, you'll then have in your kit some lock nuts. So once you've done that, just put the lock nut on the end of the screw and then just tighten it up. You'll probably need a pair of pliers for this, just to hold it in place. Also when you go to go and screw the end up, you need to be able to hold it in place. So once you've done that, Get your screwdriver, hold them up with your fingers or if you've got a pair of pliers, use a pair of pliers that is always better and then tighten it up. Once you've done that, that will be all nice and secure, ready for your ball link to go over the top. So once you've got the ball links on with the lock nut, the next thing you need to do is to insert these metal rods. And the metal rods go into the elevator, smooth side first. You'll also have one of these collets in the instruction manual. The manual says that there should be a grub screw, however there isn't. You get a little screw that just goes through the top. So what you need to do is put that over the top of the rod while it's in the elevator. So just push that in there to begin with. And then pull it back, just so that you can see that rod disappearing out of that hole there. Push that in, and then just carefully guide it on like that get it so it's nice and flush up against this edge here and then do it up because this isn't going into any sort of plastic you can use Loctite um, but make sure you only use a little bit of Loctite because just in case you ever need to get it undone once it's all done up it'll move left and right but it won't rotate too much you don't need it to rotate as long as it's in there, that's all that matters. You get plenty of movement off there anyway. There we go. So once your elevator's 
just f friction fitted into the side. I did find that mine actually catches a little bit on the inside. So we'll see what it's like when we screw it up. But I mainly just to get a little bit of sandpaper to the inside of the elevator half, just to keep it from catching too much. So you'll see that there's two holes there and there. They screw into those two notches that are on the elevator rod there. So your screws, they're in a separate bit of the bag. So don't get confused that you've run out of elevator bits. They are actually in a separate bag. Then all you do, screw them up. There we go. Then you have your elevator. Obviously do the same with the other one. Just double check once you've done this one. If it moves in and out, that means that obviously it's not screwed in quite well enough. If it doesn't, then you've got it in the right position. So I'm just going to do the same for the other side and put the other screw in. So what I've done here is I've put the elevator on. You've got the rod on with the swing keeper at the end and a ball link. With the servo M, it doesn't say in the manual which hole to put it into. I'll cover that towards the end of the video, just so that you can see how much throw you do need, and also some of the tips that you can do with the elevator, um, which may help it fly just that little bit better than it already does. Right, the next part is the most crucial bit. This is the wing sweep. So you'll have a bag of washers, with all your screws in as well. Again, Freewing haven't included any hex drivers or screwdrivers in the kit, so you will need to make sure that you have your own. So, you're going to need to make sure that you follow the instructions step by step. If you get this wrong, you will end up potentially having an accident with your wing sweep. So, the first thing that we need to do is put the washer on the main wing section there. There are two sizes of washer, there's a big washer and a small washer. You need to put the big washer over the top of that first. That just allows a little bit of clearance onto the wing so that when it moves forward and backwards you do not get any sort of friction on there at all. Once you've done that, the next bit to do is to slot your wing on the top. So you'll notice with your wing You've got two ball bearings either side. Really nice feature of the kit. Obviously it makes it nice and smooth. So what you need to do, just slide it over the top of the wing, making sure it seats properly around where the ball bearings are. Sometimes it can be a little bit tight. There we go. Give it a wiggle until it's sat seated nicely like that. Then you're going to have one of your smaller washers on top. Just make sure that you're not going to over tighten it on the bearings as you don't want to damage them. So just get it out of the bag and pop that on the top like that. So once you've put the four bolts in there, that bolt in there, and the self-tapper in there, and obviously you lock it on the top, the next thing to do is to put the control rod in on the wing. On the inside of the wing, just here, there's a little tab. That little tab there, you put one of the longer hex screws through the centre of one of these ball links, and screw it into the plastic. Now the wing is already set up from the factory as being fully extended, so adjust it, so if it needs adjusting it shouldn't do, so that it is at the same angle on both wings. And that way when you go to retract the wings they'll be in the right position, because if one wing is slightly further than the other you will end up with some trim issues. So I'm just going to pop that on now, and I'm going to do the other install for the other wing, so we can get both wings on. So once you've got the wings on, the next thing to do is to plug the wires in. The instruction manual actually says to do this later, but to be honest with you, it's the best point is to do it now. 
then you don't have to take the um, cover off again. So you'll have on your wing three wires. You'll have a flat wire, an aileron wire and an LED wire. So the LED wire needs to go into the LED light slot down here. Make sure it's not this side. It needs to be the side closest to the A. And there'll be another slot sort of halfway in between. Just check the polarity. Make sure it's the same as all the others. And then just push it into the board. Once that's pushed into the board, that's that in. Now you'll then have your aileron wire. The aileron wire goes down here. Again, make sure the signal is the right polarity. And then just push that in. They are quite tight. There we go. That's that. And then your flap. Your flap will be halfway in between. So it'd be just in between here. I've already taken one of the little um, wire tidiers off just so that I can get to the board a little bit easier. There we go. So the flap's in there and it's the one that is closest to this side towards me. Again, check polarity. And then just push the wires in. Make sure whilst you're doing all of this you haven't pulled any of the wires out. Like that. If you wanted to, you could always run a little bit of hot glue just down the sides just to keep them in. Once that's all done, you can use your little cable tidier again. Just make sure that it, none of the wires cover any of these holes that say do not cover, like that one there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it, there's a little cable tidier. I'm going to run them through there. And then just make sure that they're not covering that hole. Obviously that's where your screws go through for your top. So again, just make sure that they're not doing that. Pull them together and then put the cable tidier around it. This just means that you ended up with a little bit more of a, a neater setup. Obviously there are a lot of wires to this kit as it is so complex. And there we go. That's all of that. Just make sure they're not covering that. And then what you'll be able to do then. Before you put the top hatch on, the one thing that the freewing manual neglects to mention is all this wiring that is in the front of the plane. All of this needs to go into this same control box. It's all labelled up, so just follow what it says on there. But do make sure you do this before you put it in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wooden tray out. By taking this out, I can get to everything else a lot easier. And just put them to one side nice and safe. Because obviously you've got all of this wiring anyway. Which is a lot of wiring for the kit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run all of this underneath all of that. That way all the important wiring just stays out the way and that gets pushed down rather than being sat on top of everything else like that and then you can just plug it in as you need to so obviously you've got your rudder there should only be one left to go and that's called steer so again check the polarity push it in this is where it gets very very tight Just push it to one side a little bit. If you are struggling, you can always take one wire out just to help you. But again, as I say, this bit is a little bit fiddly. The landing gear, that just goes on the second one to the right, and then the gear door goes on the one to the left. And then push the wing down. You've got these four screws which are already installed and those two that aren't. So just start with those four and then put the other two, which are the two long screws, like that, into the front two. The last bit to do once you've done that, 
other than the scale parts, like the little extras, is to stick the canopy hatch on. I always leave this till last just to make sure that the wires are where they should be. There's a nice gluing surface on the back, a nice gluing surface underneath. Again, just as with all free wing glue, just put it on with a nice and even amount. Then all you do is you just push it in, in there, let it go off by pulling it out and then push it back in. That's your canopy hatch. It's quite a nice design. It also means that if you ever need to get your wire in, you can pull it out with a little bit of uh, lighter fluid and then you can pull this back bit off again if you ever need to get to it. Once you've got everything else together and you just left the scale bits, the last thing to do is to put the canopy, the battery hatch, sorry, back into the model. So, just the same as you took it out, just make sure that your battery wires are over the top. I found that with it, if you put them underneath, it becomes quite difficult to plug in the first battery. So just put them overneath, one either side, and then just use the screws that you used before, just to screw those down. So now once you've done all of that, the next thing is just to put the little scale bits on. First thing that I always do is I put the fins on the top of here. So you've got a blue side and you've got a sticker side. Obviously the sticker side is outside, same with everything else. A little bit of free wing glue and just pop it in. What I'll do now is just give you a quick demonstration over all the features of the F14 with the ailerons, obviously the lighting, flaps and the control board mixer and how it really does affect things quite a lot. So the first thing that we're going to show you is obviously the wing sweep. Just stand it on its nose so you can see. I've taken the nose cone off, it is only held on with magnets which is really really nice. So, but the wing sweep is a nice smooth action. I do recommend just cycling these once before you actually fly it. And this just means that one wing occasionally closes before the other and comes out before the other. Once it's been cycled once, they're fine. And you can see the wings out. Show you the retracts at the back. Just retract those. As you can see, nice and scale actual legs and wheels, they're not twist and turn but it just means that it's a lot simpler of an airframe and we're not adding any more weight. You've got the gear doors at the front which means it cleans up really really nice. Again opening gear doors all sequence with the retract. You've got a landing light at the front which is really really nice, it's the same that's on all the other free wing jets. Nice and bright. Alright, from the back of the aircraft, obviously I can show you the mixing, you've got the aileron mixing, as you can see the actual tail doing most of the work, with the wingtip ailerons doing hardly any. You've got your flap, which as you can see is a nice scale sized flap, and it also means it slows it down really really nice, however you do need a little bit of a elevator mix. At the minute I haven't got mine quite dialed in and I'm at about 5%. So I would always start with about 5% to begin with. That just means that you're not going to have any of that nose dipping issues too much. Obviously your elevator on the full flying tail. Rudders, twin rudder with the servos on the inside which is quite nice. means it's hard to catch when you're taking your model downstairs. Full suspension in the carriage as you can see on all of them. You've got all your LEDs at the back of the tail. You've got one on each wing tip and you've also got them in the centre of the actual cell there and there. As you can see this kit is an absolute stunning kit with all the scale features that you'll need. Um, obviously you're not going to be winning any jet scale masters with it because it is at the end of the day made of foam but it isn't far off. It's probably the best F-14 and best jet kit looking on the market today. Everything works, everything's there, you couldn't ask for any more. Flight times as well, which is a major thing for me, is 
around about five minutes on five thousands. Four thousands, if you're going to use those, you're probably looking at about three and a half minutes, which still isn't bad for a model of this size, and you would be able to get the weight down by a couple of hundred grams. But you will need some slightly higher C packs. So that's it for the Freewing F14. Hopefully, I've given you a little overview as to how everything works and a little. little a couple of little things that you can do just to make it that little bit better when you get to the flying field. Obviously you don't have to, the stock configuration is perfectly fine, but there are a couple of things as I said earlier in this video that actually I would change just to make it that little bit more A scale and B just fly that tiny bit better. So I shall catch you at the flying, flying field where I'll be flying it in the stock configuration with no modifications at all to the way it's set up just so you can see how it flies and then I will be doing a second video on how it flies with the modifications with the wing separated on the ailerons so that they can all be disabled and changed into full flat. Obviously I fly from grass so it's a good test to see actually how well it gets off of grass because I haven't seen many videos on it. So I shall catch you at the video at the flying field for that nice video and I hope to see you there.